In this lesson, I am going to discuss the dot product. Suppose that we have two vectors u and v and r n. We define their dot product to be the transpose of u multiplied with the vector v. That will be equal to u1 v1 plus u2 v2 up to u and v n. So basically, we are just multiplying the components and getting the sum of all those terms. Take note that the dot product of two vectors is a scalar. Remember that? Suppose we are given these values for u, v, and w. Let us compute the following. First, for u dot v, we have negative 2, 2 times 5, 8. We simply multiply the components. So that's 2 times 5 plus negative 2 times 8. This is equal to 10 minus 16 is negative 6. Next, u dot v times w. Remember that u dot v is just the scalar, negative 6. So this is just negative 6 times the vector w, negative 4, 3. So hence, this is equal to 24, negative 18. Next, we want u dot 2v. 2v is equal to 10, 16. So this is 2 times 10, 20, plus negative 2 times 16 is negative 32. This is equal to negative 12. And lastly, we have u dot v minus 2w. Let us compute first for v minus 2w. This is... 5, 8 minus 2w is negative 8, 6. This is 5 minus negative 8 is 13. 8 minus 6 is 2. Hence, we just want the dot product of 2, negative 2, and v minus 2w is 13, 2. This is equal to 2 times 13. Plus negative 2 times 2. This is equal to 22. Here are the properties of the dot product. First, the dot product is commutative. The order does not matter. u dot v is the same as v dot u. Next, it is distributive with respect to vector addition. So remember that this is not scalar multiplication. This is your dot product. Alright? Because u is a vector, v plus w is a vector. Whereas for scalar multiplication, you have a scalar times a vector. The answer to a scalar times a vector is another vector. Whereas the answer to a vector dot another vector is a scalar. Going back, u dot v plus w, we can distribute u, so that's u dot v plus u times w. Next, we have distributivity with scalar multiplication. However, be careful with the word distributivity here. What is this saying? If you have u dot v multiplied to a scalar c, what do you do? You put the c inside your first component. So it's now c u dot v. However, take note that this c u dot v is equal to c times v dot u. From here, this is saying that you can put your c on the first component. So I will do that here. My first component is v. So therefore, this is equal to c v dot u. Then again, using the commutativity of that product, this is the same as u dot cv. Hence, we have shown that c times u dot v, let me now write it here, it's equal to u dot cv. So now, we know that whenever you have a scalar multiplied to the dot product, you can either put it on the first component or you can put it on the second component. And lastly, the dot product of a vector with itself is always greater than or equal to zero, 
and it will only be equal to 0 if and only if the vector is the zero vector. Take note of my notation here. When it's bold, that means this is the zero vector. This zero here is your zero real number. I will be proving the first two properties. So first, let us check that that product is really commutative. Recall that u is a column vector. However, I wrote it as a row vector, so therefore I just have my transpose there. By definition, u dot v is equal to u1 v1 plus u2 v2 and so on plus un vn. However, v dot u is equal to the product again of the entries of v and u, which is v1 u1 and so on. But of course, since multiplication is commutative, these two things over here are equal. For the second one, suppose that W is W1, W2 up to Wn. First, let us evaluate the left-hand side. This is U dot V plus W. This is V plus W. So therefore, this is U1 times V1 plus W1 and so on up to Un times Vn plus Wn. And we can distribute. So that's U1, V1 plus u1, w1, and so on, up to un, vn, plus un, wn. However, for the right-hand side, the first term is u1, v1, and so on, up to un, vn, plus for this one, u1, w1, and so on, up to un, wn. So if I just collect all the terms with u1s first, I now get u1, v1 plus u1, w1. Same thing also for the other entries. This is up to, if I collect the terms involving un, so that's un, vn plus un, wn. And that is exactly your left-hand side. So therefore, these two are really equal. Let us use the properties of the dot product to evaluate this. Suppose that the dot product of u with itself is 39, dot product of u and v is negative 3, and v dot v is 79. Let us evaluate the value of u plus 2v dot 3u plus 2v. Now, using the properties of dot product, it is distributive, right? So I will multiply this whole thing here and here. So hence, we have u plus 2v dot product with 3u plus u plus 2v dot product with v. Note that it's not in the list that I had earlier, but we can also distribute from here to here because remember that dot product is commutative. So this one, so I now have u dot 3u plus 2v dot 3u plus u dot v plus 2v dot v. So therefore, that product follows also the FOIL method. Let's continue. u dot 3u is equal to 3u u. 2v dot 3u is 6 times v dot u plus u dot v plus 2v v. The nice thing about that product is that it is commutative. Hence, this is just the same. uv is the same as vu. So this is 7 v dot u. So hence, what can we observe here? We can do FOIL under the dot product. So now we can substitute. Our u dot u is 39 plus 7 times v dot u is the same as u dot v. So that's negative 3 plus 2 times 79. This is equal to 254. Next, let us define the norm or length or magnitude of a vector in Rn. The length of a vector is just the square root of its dot product with itself. Note that the length of a vector cannot be negative. Obviously, you have here the squares of numbers. You cannot get a negative number from that. And 
the length of a vector will be equal to zero if and only if the vector is the zero vector. Example, let us find the norm of the following vectors. So for this one, this is just the square root of, just square the components and add. Hence, this is the square root of 9 plus 4 is 13 plus 1. That is square root of 14. What about this one? The length of V. This is the square root of 3 fifths squared plus 4 fifths squared, which is equal to 9 over 25 plus 16 over 25, which is equal to Suppose that the length of u is 2, the length of v is 3, and the dot product of u and v is negative 4. Let us compute the length of 2u plus 3v. By definition, 2u plus 3v, its length is equal to the dot product of 2u plus 3v with itself. And then, square root. Remember that we can treat it as if we are just multiplying real numbers. So we have 2u times 2u, so that's 4u dot u plus 12u dot v plus 9v dot v. However, u dot u is 4 times the length of u squared. Similarly, v dot v is 9 times the length of v squared. So this is equal to 4 times, substitute the value of the length of u, so that's 2 squared plus 12 times negative 4 plus 9 times 3 squared. This is equal to... 16 minus 48 plus 81, which is equal to the square root of 49, that's equal to 7. Let us now discuss parallel vectors. Two non-zero vectors, u and v, are parallel if one of them is a scalar multiple of the other. In other words, u is equal to c times v, where c is a scalar. So take note that if the scalar c is positive, the two vectors have the same direction, whereas if c is negative, the two vectors have opposite direction. So for example, here my u is the vector 1, 1, v is the vector 2, 2, and w is the vector negative 2, negative 2. So V is equal to 2U and W is equal to negative 2U, right? And W has opposite direction as U because the scalar multiplied to U is negative. Now, what can we say about the length of parallel vectors? Take note that you can simply pull out the scalar, but of course, remember that the length is always positive. So therefore, you get the absolute value of the scalar. So for example, the length of negative 2u, just like in our previous example, that's 2 times the length of u. For instance, our vector u is negative 1, 3, 0, 4. Find a vector v that has a direction opposite to that of u and twice its length. The fact that u and v has opposite directions tells us that V is just a scalar multiple of U, but that number should be a negative number because opposite direction. And because its length is twice the length of U, that is 2 times U, but you have to multiply it by a negative number. Remember that the length of V is negative 2U, and this is equal to 2 times u. So hence, v is equal to negative 2u or 2 negative 6, 0, negative 8.
Next, let us find the distance between two vectors, u and v. It is defined to be length of the difference of u and v. So, take note that, of course, the distance between two vectors is greater than or equal to 0 because the magnitude is always greater than or equal to 0. The distance between two vectors is equal to 0 if and only if these two vectors are the same. And lastly, the distance between two vectors u and v is the same as the distance between v and u. The order does not matter. Here is a graphical interpretation of the distance. This is my vector v. This happens in R2. This is my vector u. This length over here is the length of the vector u minus v. Let us find the distance between u and v here. So first, let us compute u minus v. u minus v is the vector 0 minus 2. 2 minus 0 is 2 and 2 minus 1 is 1. And then we just have to get the length. So it's the square root of negative 2 squared. You just square all the components plus 1. So this is 4 plus 4, 8 plus 1, which is 9. Square root of 9 or 3. Vectors of length 1 are special vectors and we call them unit vectors. Take note that the standard coordinate vectors are unit vectors. Now what we want to do next is to normalize a vector. Suppose that V is a non-zero vector in Rn. Suppose this is that vector. We want to normalize this vector. When we say that we want to normalize a vector, we want to find a vector such that it has the same direction as V, but this one has a length of 1. And what is that vector going to be? What you need to do is to just multiply the vector v by 1 over its length. Take note that u and v are parallel here because u is just a scalar multiple of v. And this vector u here, let us get the length. Remember that this is just a scalar. In particular, this is a positive scalar. So I can simply pull it out. And the absolute value of that is just itself because this is already positive. So this is 1 over v times the norm of v, which is really equal to 1. For example, let us find a unit vector that has the same direction as 3, 4. Verify that this vector has length 1. What do you need to do? You just have to get the norm of v. That is equal to 5. Correct? So therefore, our unit vector u is just 1 over 5 times our vector v. So that's 1 fifth, 3 4. So that's 3 fifths, 4 fifths. And indeed, this one has length of 1.